Hello, gamers. All right, our path for today is looking pretty clear because we've got a little bit of a crisis brewing. We've got this station, which apparently has a bounty on it, is now deploying these fleets who are going to go saturation bombard our colony. And it says our defenses are outmatched and it will result in catastrophic damage. Uh, that's not good. That's the opposite of good. We would, we would not like that to happen. So we need to do something about that. Now, first of all, I'm going to get a little closer to try and scout out their fleets, see what's there, because their sensor profiles at this distance look pretty big, but it does depend. If there's a lot of, like, the Colossus Mark II, it's not very scary. If there's a lot more Eradicators, if they've got, I guess it depends on how many of the Prometheus Mark II, because that's going to be their capital ship. Depending on what per percentage is junk versus actual threats, it could be that these are mostly chaff or that these are an actual threat. And so depending on that, I may want to fortify my fleet before taking them on, which would just mean, really, going and grabbing more ships. Now, worst case scenario, I could just go straight home and grab the Legion, probably the 14 variant this time instead of the, instead of the other one. I don't want to use the Legion with the PCLs because that was specifically for the Ziggurat, and I did console command in those PCLs. So that was for that fight. And because they were kind of cheated in, they're not going to get used for anything else. That was purely a demonstration. So I don't want to touch it. Don't want to touch it. But the other Legion that's not going to be using PCLs, that one is fair game. So that is worst case scenario. But ideally what I would be able to do is just sprint over to the core worlds and grab a Paragon because I do have high enough reputation that I believe I could buy one if there's one available. So that's the first thing going on here is scout them out, depending on what's there, maybe go grab more ships. There should be enough time that I could sprint over and grab a Paragon. And if I don't find a Paragon, then I'll just sprint home to intercept them, grab a Legion, for, grab the Legion 14 that's there. And then, and then of course I can not only pick off, try to pick off like the fleets when they're isolated from each other, but I can also use the Star Fortress at home to try and help me out. And at the same, and I can even put a, an Alpha Core in the Star Fortress to boost its effectiveness. You know, temporarily, of course. Uh, I don't think I'm going to put it there permanently, just before the fleet arrives. If I end up doing that. So we've got plans, we've got plans. If they're too much to handle right now, then we can go deal with it in other ways. And if they're easy to deal with right now, then we'll deal with them right now. And then after that, I do ultimately want to explore the Abyss. Now I more or less know what's in here, because I've done that in another save file. And some of the rewards are going to be more useful after we've gotten the Yanis device from completing the main quest line. So I want to get onto that first, and then we can go gear up at home and get ready to explore the Abyss. And at the same time, while we're here, I would like to get my relationship with our contact buddy over here, Mr. Arroyo, so that eventually, because I believe importance high is high enough that he can eventually give us the Tesseract bounty, which is ultimately one of the goals of this playthrough, is to clear the Tesseracts, all of them. So I found one of the Hypershunts, that's a start, but we do want to find the other Hypershunt and the bounty. Uh, I wonder if, and then of course we want to finish all of the colony crises, at least all of the ones that end up generating in this playthrough. And then that would be the end, basically, because I'm not going to go around saturation bombarding the core worlds. You know, you can do that on your own time. I'm sure you've got your own murderous tendencies to let out. I'm not going to do that for you. So let's get started on this. What do we have here? Okay, I'm seeing hammerheads and sunders. And this is the Ludic Path, so I'm going to assume safety overrides. Along with eradicators, I'm seeing a venture with the, you know, the modified venture with the Orion device. And I'm only seeing one Colossus here. And in fact, I'm not even seeing that many frigates. It's mostly in those eradicators, those overdriven destroyers, and the Prometheus Mark II. 
That is pretty threatening compared to the average Lytic Path fleet, and it's big. Now, if my fleet was well optimized at this point, and we had best of the best, and we had triple S mods on everything, and all of our officers were kitted out with the right set of skills, I would still go take that on. That would be doable. But with the S mods distribution being very limited to like the Paragon and the, the, the Furies, and I would really like to have plasma cannons on this thing, to be honest, uh, and just suboptimal officer loadouts. Yeah, I don't think I want to take that on right now. So if all of them are about that strong, that's worrying. Okay. So with that being said, I am going to sprint over to Hi Brazil. Well, probably the, the franchise here. Although I don't, I doubt they're going to have a Paragon at this one. It's only size 4. But hopefully Kalan has a Paragon. And if not, we'll just sprint back home and grab the Legion. And at the same time, depends on how many of them I can pull off before I can peel off of the main fleet before they get there. But I may have to use the Star Fortress with an Alpha Core. Because I'm seeing three fleets so far. Does it give me any more information here? Likely comprised of five. Okay. So I guess the other ones just haven't spawned yet. That's what I assume. Uh, let's see. So. We'll go to Kalan first, actually. Because we can, we can just grab the other one on the way back. Even though it's just very unlikely that it's going to have anything. And that's really the only place that you might find a Paragon. And yeah, I think that's the plan. Is to, well, first of all... Yeah, that's a lot of Eradicators. Wow. Okay. I do not like that. So we are getting out of here. see how long does it set yeah it says 67 days until arrival we should be able to beat that that's relatively slow so first off we've got to deal with this crisis I think crisis is a fitting name for it feels like a crisis although with how much dilly dallying I've done in this playthrough my, my fleet should be stronger by now uh, but for entertainment purposes it is not because I've made some suboptimal decisions Especially if you have a playthrough that's not on iron mode and you just, you know, if you make a poor decision, you make a ballsy decision, you just reload if it doesn't work out. Uh, in this case, living with the consequences and then provoking colony crisis might be a little difficult. Now, I assume that the saturation bombardment, like worst case scenario if it goes through, I don't think it destroys the colony. I think it just decreases it by one size, which, you know, just decreases it by one size is maybe an interesting way of phrasing it. But it's not like the end, of, it's not a game over, really. It just hurts. All right, I'm seeing a Tachyon Lance. I own six of that. Very interesting. Plasma Cannon, cool. I'll grab those because I think, I think there's not really any point in buying a Tachyon Lance, to be honest. Uh, I do think, okay, Paragon. Yes, but I also don't have the cash for it. I didn't even think of that. Uh, Aurora. So, hold on. Let me think about this. Yeah, I should have thought of that. Of course I don't have the cash for it. Unless I magically pull a bunch of cash out of thin air. To be fair, I could do that. That's another 600,000 right there. Except, of course, it's actually more than that because it's going to be triple because I'm at Tritachion. So I could grab one. And I know it's sacrilegious to use Alpha Course for this purpose, but... I'm not actually going to be using all of these. I'm going to... Like, I've been carrying them around. Like, that's not what... You know, I'm not using all of these. I'm going to be using... I don't plan on putting one as an administrator. I'm really just using one for accessibility, one for commerce. And then I'll keep an extra one around that I can use to create stable points at stars if I need to, which... I mean, but that same one that I'm using to create stable points can also be dropped into the Star Fortress temporarily. And we're finishing up this planetary shield too. I wonder if that'll impact the calculation. That'd be interesting to find out. Although probably not. I get the feeling that they're just gonna... Well, it is gonna triple our defenses. 
I believe that's what it does. I believe it multiplies ground defense by three. And if they're deploying a fleet that's meant for 1800, and then suddenly they get there, and it's 5400, maybe they won't have enough fuel to actually do the saturation bombardment, because there's just too much defense. Maybe. Although that's being a bit optimistic. Okay. So, as sacrilegious as it may be, it's for the greater good. Alright, time for you to go bye-bye. Is it only two? Let's see if I do both. Five. Yeah, it's 2.5 reputation. So this is a bit of a way. We're wasting 0.5 reputation if we do it like that. Now, 450,000. I like how you can just go to them and be like, I'm here to turn in an AI core, which is kind of a big deal. And then just give me a go. Yeah, never mind. I don't actually have any. And they don't, like, get mad at you. I would be mad at somebody if they did that. That would be insane. Yeah, 7,007. I'd be so close. One gets me so close. But then I also need fuel. Oh man, this sucks. I also need fuel so I can actually get home. Maybe I could sell a bunch of these weapons that I'm not using. Might need that. Um, let's see. Yeah. Especially if I have more at home. Like if I look at this, 18 at home, 7 at home, 6 at home. Yeah, a lot of these smaller ones. I'm not going to be needing these. That's only 7,000 credits. That's kind of embarrassing. 17,000. Oh, you know what? Fighters give you a lot of cash. Fighter LPCs give you a lot of cash compared to other weapons. So if I sell all of that, then I turn in an Alpha Core. That should give me enough money. Yeah, I don't know why that's still in the way. I've already clicked that option and it doesn't do anything. I want to just be able to click one and go straight to this screen because that's what it normally is. All right, we'll turn that in and give me a Paragon. I mean, this is a fair trade. Tritachian's probably very happy with this trade. I give you AI core, you give me Paragon. Simple. Clean. Okay. We've got Paragon number two. Now I just need to make sure it gets well equipped, which we can worry about when we get home. For now. For now. So now I own a total of four of this weapon. Okay, perfect, because I want to use double. Yeah, I don't need that. I bought that even though I don't need it. That was silly. Now what I want to do. So I'm going to equip them with those. I also don't need this much heavy machinery. Oh. I was about to sell them, but they're at like half price right now. That's really bad. I'd rather not do that. Uh, if they're if they're selling well at Phillips, then no, it looks like it's the opposite. They're they're underpriced. 127, still better than here, but not ideal. Yeah, I don't have too much time to just faff about here. What am I paying? For oh my my goodness. This is not ideal. Okay. We're going to go to Esconia. I want to save... don't want to be spending too much time because... Well, even if they take 67 days to get to my homeworld, the, the more time that I have before them, the better. Oh, there's a system bounty going on in here too. Cool. Actually, that would probably be an ideal time to use... Yeah, there's a lot of pirates around. That would be an ideal time to use Transverse Jump to save a couple days. Okay, so now we're at War at the Hegemony. Good to know. Very cool. Now let's just go straight to Syndria. Yeah, I'll sell them some heavy machinery, even though it's not ideal. I could go to the independent world in this system, but I'm not going to do that. Right, I am going to keep some of this, though. Don't want to throw it all away. Okay. Does that get me home? Yes. Okay, how much time do we have? 43 days. It says 50 days at base burn level, but I don't think that factors in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, leave. I don't think that factors in sustained burn. Actually, hold on. Let me just... Let me, let me click a zero. Let me get this. 
That should save me a few days. Now we get Sustainburn going. We should get there first. And we can outfit our Paragon once we get home. We can drop off one Alpha Core in the Star Fortress. And everything should be hunky-dory. Everything should be great. See, look, now we're 35 days away at burst burn level. And they're 40 days away. So we are going to get there first. Even if we go at base burn level, which we're not. Let's see. Yeah, it only says the Space Force. It does not say Ground Forces. Which, you know, Saturation Bombardment is resisted by your ground defenses. So, maybe it should. Although, may, it's possible that the Crisis just always succeeds at Saturation Bombardment. And it ignores your ground defenses. That's possible, but it would also kind of make... Partly just because ground defenses are boring, they're just a number. So, if, you know, you just get the number high enough, you're immune to the crisis, that would be kind of lame. But then again, it's also lame having this stat that does nothing. Yeah, that could probably use some work. I imagine that, a, just like how the orders tab is currently empty, you're supposed to be able to, like... In the future, you're going to be able to request fleets from your own military base to assist you with things. That's the idea. So you're going to be able to give out orders. So I imagine that all of this is going to be developed further once the, at the same time. Like, ground defenses are probably going to get more meaning attached to them at the same time as the orders tab is fleshed out and military bases are fleshed out and all of that good stuff. And look at that, the slipstream even helped us along. 29 days, okay. Yeah, 6.6 .6 days at base burn level, but we're gonna go faster than that. The storms can even help us along. How kind of them. Okay. Right, so we are, let's see, we're right next to the gas giant, so we can drop off here. No need to go to the jump point. So, first things first. Manage Colony, M, Star Fortress. Here, have this. This should be quite powerful. This is going to finish in a few days. Hopefully that does something. That would be nice. And then on top of that... Of course, there's always other options. I don't actually have to fight them. We can disrupt the Pather Cell by going after whatever base is supplying them. We can cut a deal with the Pathers. I could give them the bomb. Or at least I could have done that. I think it's probably too late to go running back now. Oh well, 24 days. And 39. I could probably beat them back to their base. There's a decent chance that I could do that. Not to mention, there's probably a base closer by. Although, I guess I can't find it. Unfortunate. Well, whatever. Okay, first off, drop that. We're gonna go plasma cannons. Right, it's time to kill. And we're going to delete all of these variants because I'm not using those. We want the the real one. The real ship. Do I have any more? I do have more burst PD. Perfect. Although it looks like I won't have enough for both of them. I guess the other one will be getting like a shock repeater, maybe throwing a, li a rift lance. Yeah, okay, and I do have two story points. Going with solar shielding is probably pointless for the purposes of this battle, but turret gyros, that's going to be good. That's going to be huge. Okay. Or I could just leave these with basic PD lasers, but... Mm. Throwing in a random shock repeater is nice. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay, so that should help. Is there anything else I can spend another story point on that would be good for this? Maybe one of the omens. All oh, right, and you can level up. Uh, you are missing combat endurance, so you're not going to be sticking around for too long. But I can grab or systems expertise to make you more effective for this battle. Uh, you, actually, you've got, so far, perfect skills. So spending a story point on you is probably a good idea. Target analysis should make a big difference in your effectiveness. And Ordnance Expertise, you've got the four, these are the four basic skills that you want. The fifth one, somewhat flexible. Ordnance Expertise ain't great. I'd prefer Helmsmanship or Point Defense or something. 
Uh, but it's, it's the least important skill, so it doesn't really... So yeah, it's suboptimal, but I'm probably not going to bother trading you up for somebody else. Okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. That's good. That's great. Anything else I need? Might as well grab more supplies and more cash. Or not more cash, more fuel. Which apparently I just have. In storage. No, this is the open market. Here's storage. We can drop that off. No, I'd rather grab from here. Because it's going to be a better price not paying those taxes. Let's get up to close to a thousand. I've got two paragons I'm lugging around. That's kind of a big deal. Speaking of... You should probably just move to the Paragon. That does leave one Medusa without an officer. And that's a shame. There's no options available right now. But the Medusas are mostly going to escort the Paragons. So I guess it doesn't... Hopefully it just doesn't die. That would be nice. If it doesn't die, that would be nice. I don't want to have to replace it yet again. But yeah, having a bunch of Omens, even though they lack S-Mods... Two Paragons, two Medusas. I've still got 26 points. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be working with any of these. Some of them are too much, too many points. Can't fit them into the rest of the fleet. And some of them... Yeah, maybe I could try and restoring this, but that'd be expensive. So we're going to leave it at that. Okay, so first things first... 24 days out. Okay. So we're going to ambush them in hyperspace. Because we want to be able to kill one fleet. And then repair all the CR and hit points lost. Or HP lost. You know, hull points. Now, unfortunately, if they're coming through deep hyperspace, it's going to be hard to see them. The worst case scenario would be if they slipped past me somehow. Okay, that's definitely fake. Unless it's some kind of weird trade fleet following a weird path. Where are you guys? 20 days out. Yeah, we're currently not that far out. Planetary shield finished. Excellent. Yeah, 5,494. Perfect. I'm assuming... That, yeah, it doesn't seem to have changed anything here. It would be interesting if it actually saved you from from a bombardment. It would be, it'd be a nice little reward for finding the planetary shield before this stage of the game. Where are they? Because I'm really not sure how far along they should be. I'm directly in the path that they should be taking. Unless they take like a roundabout path. Which would be very scary. So let's wait. Let's wait. Just hold your nerves. 12 days. I'm still not seeing anything. All right, let's get closer to our home system because this is nine days. Where are they? Is this them? Unidentified fleet. I'm seeing Pather technology in there. I think that's a Pather Manticore. It says it's traveling to my system. I see other unidentified stuff. What? Huh. That's different. I think... I think that was that was the sensor ghost that was following me, right? Well, if I can trick the pathers into fighting that, that would be that would help get rid of some of the trash. Okay, so this one looks I'm seeing three eradicators. This looks relatively easy if I can fight it by itself. Yeah, I am fighting it by itself. Perfect. Don't even get bonus XP. I can deploy everything from the start. Excellent. Okay, if we can chew them down, 
we can get them whittled down. That would be excellent. All right. And then maybe we'll have a dramatic final clash at the station with whatever they have, at the, the core of their fleets. Yeah, I think it was pretty close there whether or not the other one would join. Although I don't know whether that depends on sensors. Maybe, maybe if they can't see you, like you're hiding in a cloud so they can't see you, or it might just be a, a, like a join range that doesn't care about vision. I'm actually not sure about that. Right, let's see what they've got. There's Gremlin, Gremlin. This is their stuff. This is where the main stuff is. Okay, right, so you guys, I see you turning this way. You do that every single time, I'm well aware. You always go after the isolated ship instead of where I actually need you. That's fine, I'm prepared for it. I know what you're trying to do, and so I'm ready for it. Although it looks like they're going diagonally across, which is a bit annoying, because now I've got to move these. We want to intercept them. And before the Paragons show up, I would love to snipe a few of their little guys. Thin the herd. More or less more, just the same thing that we're doing on a macro level, but on a micro level. Good old defeat in detail. It's worked for thousands of years and will work for thousands of years more. Although they are really huddled up. They are, they are glued to each other. Wow. They, they really are committed to the bit. Alright, well, let's release you guys from that. This eradicator looks like it's getting whooped. You know, maybe these graviton beams... Maybe I should swap them out for something else just because shields aren't... Pathers aren't big on shields, you might notice. They're not, they're, they're not all about the shields. It's a distinct quality that they have. Oh, hold on. Let me get this. There we go. Perfect. Just toggle back and forth like that. Shepherd spin. Classic. Never fix that, please. The shepherd spin is just iconic. Right, we don't want to we don't want to ruin it. I mean, what would the game be without a shepherd spin? It would be spinless. Which is which of course is impossible because all particles have spin. So to be something that is spinless would just it, it would not exist. It's a little particle physics for you. Man, the description of particle spin is really fun, because it's like, okay, so think of a ball that's spinning, except that it's not a ball, and it's not spinning. Because, well, particles aren't actually balls, they're more like points that have measurable quality. They're like zero, they occupy like zero physical space, but they have things like mass and energy. Right? So they, they have measurable th like properties, but they don't actually occupy space in the way that we think of occupying physical space for physical objects. Particles are weird like that. And so they, they right, and one of those measurable quantities is spin. So they have a lot, they have a measurable spin, even though it's physically impossible for them to be spinning, because that, that would require them to be spinning faster than the speed of light, because they don't actually occupy any space. Yeah, the universe is a little weird. As it turns out, reality is under no obligation to make sense to you. Just a fun little fact. Oh. Good. That's not what I wanted. I was hoping to recover a little bit of CR first. But hey, you leveled up. That's so cool. It's so cool that we get to do that before we get jumped. This is... Oh, look at that. You even get field modulation. That is so cool. I'm so happy about that. Because this one looks scarier. That one had like three eradicators. This one's got four eradicators, plus three Prometheus Mark II, and then a lot more destroyers. Alright, but 
nothing to do but dive right in. If I could escape, I would. Oh, I can. What? It just passed right through me. And I don't know where he's going because he went way up that way. Okay. Definitely did not go in the correct direction. Uh, now my only concern is, are they going to drop through this gravity well? Three days until arrival. Or are they going to drop through the, uh, the jump point? I have no idea. Two days until arrival. That's a different thing. That's definitely a pather fleet. But it's a small one. There's the bigger one. That's a small one. That's an un No, that's a different fleet. Okay, so these are the guys. So that one went in system already. So we can catch this one at the back. And then we should be able to head straight for the gas giant gravity well, repair at our station, and then take out the other one. That's the plan. Okay, this is doable. So the one without an officer will do the escort duty because, well, that should put it in a safer position, whereas the other one actually has an officer and should be more capable of handling itself. So we really want to get that last Paragon on the field. Which, actually, we should be fine with just these two. We probably don't need to capture these two. Because I'm forgetting, when you don't have best of the best, your early deployment is more limited up right up until you capture the most available capture points. Okay, that's a lot of stuff. Let's be careful. And let's just set a normal capture order here. Let's set, like, a defense order here. Let's not go too crazy. So that's one... It's two? Yeah, okay. So, that's fine. We can deploy that. Looks like they're coming down this way. See, so yeah, let's put that there. Let's take control. I want to be able to hunt these destroyers so that they don't overwhelm the fleet. Perfect, that's one down. Okay, that's another one that I can hunt. Oh, thank you. Thanks for, for donating a reaper for me to refill my thing. It's not quite how it works, but I appreciate the thought. Alright, so they're all coming after me. That's fine. This is fine. off a bit. Switch it up. Yep, they're kind of surrounding everybody. This is a situation I like to refer as to as less than ideal, but I am killing this eradicator. That's a start. Alright, the Prometheus. Oh, okay. We want to be dealing with these before they actually start fighting the Paragons. Too much stuff at once. I hear is bad for your health. All right, let's pull back. Bend over here, switch it up. We can finish this guy off. It's another pawn off the field. Well, I probably should have fired the Reaper at the same time as the Savos to try and force an overload. That's fine. Uh, where's the... Right, you can escort this one. I forgot to do that. We can actually remove these orders now. Uh, we can also remove that order. That's fine. This thing is, looks like it's already dead. I think it's... Oh, it must be retreating. That's why. So this guy has kind of screwed himself. I don't see the third one. It would be nice if I had S-modded. This would be a good situation to have S-modded the, uh, the, the sensors on the omens because then I would get, like, this much extra range around them. And I would probably be able to see the third one right now. If I scroll through... You can see a little bit further if you do this. Hmm... I'm seeing an eradicator. I think that's what that is. It's like the tippy top of an eradicator. It's probably right here then. It's probably where the rest of their fleet is. 
So you can take care of this. I mean, you already are, but just explicitly making sure you don't get distracted. You, this guy's isolated himself. Uh, this is just foolish. I mean, the Pathers aren't exactly known for their brilliant war tactics. Oh, that's probably bad. I forgot that, yeah, there's a... There's a big uh, gun, a big uh, missile on the front, which uh, can do big damage. I kind of forgot it could just do that. Oh, did I just... Yeah, I got a little bit of a tachyon across the bow. That's fine. Okay. I mean, we don't really care that much about this point, but it is pulling at least that away. These guys, I don't know where they're going, but they're late. All right, so pretty clean so far. Just got to make sure we don't get overwhelmed. And so far, we're succeeding. Wow, the AI even hit that. It's pretty good. It looks a lot like they're retreating, but that might just be because these guys specifically are low on HP. Didn't they have a third one? I, I've only seen two so far for the capitals. Is this... is there not a third one? I, I, or maybe I was looking at the other fleet and this one only had two the whole time? Because they're definitely retreating. Are we going to catch anything? Well, you're going to catch that for sure. Uh, everything else, no. Alright, we'll claim victory. Alright. That's another one down. Oh, is that 54% bonus XP? Nice. We did lose a Medusa. It does cost a story point. No, I'm not going to be grabbing that. We can always buy more Medusas. And we've always got more Phase Lances. So that's not too much of an issue. And I sus yeah, that's the one without the officer. Because if, I believe if it has an officer, it does not. Re it will never require story points to recover. So that's what I was worried about, and that's what happened. So be it. Mm-hmm. I'll take all of that, thank you very much. So yeah, they've arrived in system. Still says outmatched because, you know, system defense is pretty terrible when you don't have any kind of production, native production to increase the quality. All right, let's get moving. Yeah, that's the trade fleet. There's, there's a bunch of other sh fleets in system. I wonder if they're going to deal with the Pathers. Maybe you know, maybe they will. Maybe if you've just got enough activity in your system, all the other fleets will deal with it for you. That would be interesting. Can I get an officer? No. That's fine. This, this is fine. We can level you up. That's good. Get a little more combat readiness for you. A little more stats. Stats are good. Stats help us win. Yeah, so you get deployed last, so you go in the back. It still says five fleets, even though we've destroyed a few, so I guess that just tells you the number that deploy. It doesn't tell you the total that actually reached there. So we destroyed that small one in hyperspace. We destroyed the one here. Uh, hopefully one of them got tangled up with those remnants in hyperspace. That would be nice. Which, yeah, normally remnants don't show up in hyperspace, but I think that's like a special little Easter egg, basically in before someone tells me that there's like a special reward for fighting them, but I, I doubt it. I don't... I don't think so. Oh, there's nothing. Interesting. That just means that the colony is doing well, because there's nobody complaining about anything in the bar. That's probably what that means. Okay, so we're seeing... That one definitely has three. They're pursuing my fleet. Or not. They're isolated. There's another one back there with a ton of eradicators. Alright, this is what it's going to be. Oh, the hegemony investigators are battling us because now we're with, at war with them thanks to Tritachion. Right. That's actually making things worse. You guys couldn't... Guys, there's a common enemy over here that feels like it's more important. I feel like you should care more about this instead of making my life worse. 
look, the, look, I know, I know, there's an AI core in the fortress. I know. You guys don't like that. But hear me out. It was temporary. Okay, it was temporary. I was... Look, look to your left. Do you want another Do you want another Mayasura? Is that what you want? Really? Okay? Think this through before you take action. And this is why you never joined the hegemony. Really. This is why I left you guys. You're, ju you're just like this. At least Tritachion is honest about how cutthroat they are. There's no preconceptions about morality. This, this is a letdown. <sighs> what does this sector come to, really? All right, let's catch you. 67%, slightly higher than the last one. Does look like a few of their ships are banged up. Don't know how much that's going to matter, really. But we're in perfect condition, so that's good. It's a good start. All right, we want to capture... All right, so, send you there, you there, and then I'll send my flagships over here. No, I just want the three in the middle, actually, like that. And I guess you can do that. Yeah, no, wait, hold on, you can do that, that's right. We do want to get that other paragon onto the field. Which is going to mean forcing these omens to stay at the capture points that they're at until we can grab this nab buoy. It'd be convenient if this was a second comm relay, which sometimes it is. But no such luck. So we do need you to stay there. Uh, do I need you to stay there? It doesn't look like it so far. Which one am I? Hold on. I'm the one that just ran the omen. That makes sense. You know, the AI wouldn't do that. I love how it prefers to fire Sabos rather than anything else, like antimatter blasters. Oh, look, we didn't capture the comm relay because, yeah, okay, that's a bad, that's bad. We don't want to delay this. So I need to be killing things, and I also need to be paying attention to the map so that I'm not missing an opportunity to deploy. And that hound is just running straight into the capture point, preventing me entirely. Yeah, I think it's too late. The Hound is, because they're reckless, they're just running straight into the capture point. I should have sent two omens. That's what I should have done, instead of just the one. Unfortunately, it's a bit late to be regretting that decision to send a single one. I thought the further capture point would be harder, so I brought all my forces. And now, I don't even get this capture point because the AI is just so reckless that it's, it's impossible. Maybe we can get like a Hail Mary if we grab that one. Since they're kind of they're gonna abandon that capture point pretty quickly. Oh come on, flares blocking. Flares blocking my heavy blaster? That's a crime. Oh, you are so close to hitting that. You were so close. Why are you going the long way? That's the worst way to do that. Of all the ways that you could try to do that, that was the worst way of doing that. Why would you do it the worst way? It's called the worst way for a reason. You, of all the paths that you could have chosen. In life, of all the paths in life you could have chosen, you chose the stupidest one. Why? And of course I fired the Sabos from out of range. Now I'm having trouble. This sucks. And of course, he's not going to overload. He's clever enough to do that. Alright, good. Look, at least... Yeah, you're destroying that. Okay, if we can wipe the big boys before they become a threat, that would be good. It's still firing the Squall after dying. That's just... Yeah, you know, that's how Squalls work. Not really anything to do about that. Um, interesting choice. I mean, you are distracting it, so that's good. That could be a problem. So it looks like... Uh, wh what? Why? What are you doing? Why are you doing? Who are you doing? What is this? Why are you doing this? Stop. Stop trying to go around... The, what, like, what is happening here? Clearly somebody took the smart route, and another guy took the fool's route. The fool's gold of directions, some might say. It looks like the golden path but it's actually the Fool's Golden Path. 
So that guy, I didn't kill him, but I did enough damage that he's almost certainly just retreating. Omen destroyed, of course, because he took the Fool's Golden Path. That's simply what happens. I mean, I'm sure there's an idiom about this somewhere. You dig deep enough. All right, let's let the AI take care of that. All right, perfect. Let's just delete this guy and then move on. How's the Paragon doing? Pretty good as it turns out. Just a single Paragon. All right, I can deploy the second one probably. No, no, no. That's, that's 20 extra supplies wasted. Not that that's a big deal, but double-clicking, double-clicking. Sometimes it is annoying. Uh, that's a lot of fighters, and this thing is safety overrides. So I'm going to come help. That's what I'm going to do. I'm a helpful guy. Okay. Yeah, we got this. We got this. I just want to make sure that he's dead. All right. Yeah, you're venting. That's fine. Uh, this guy looks like he's probably just going to retreat, but I can finish him off if I want to. You can come kill this. You can kill that. And that looks like everything. So, this, this is something we're doing pretty comfortably, but we did suffer a loss. So I think we have about the right amount of fleet power, right? We are, our, our ships are not optimized or anything, but we have enough of them in a good composition. And so that's about the right amount of fleet power to take on this crisis, which is supposedly one of the weaker ones. So I imagine some of the stronger ones are going to be a bit scarier. Yeah, and all that's left is you and you. Perfect. You kill that. I'm just going to run away from these fighters. Now, hopefully you actually get a chance to shoot. Oh, you've got one hypervelocity drive. I guess I only have one heavy meter, huh? Unfortunate. Yeah, you're dead. Simple as that. It's another one down. We'll pursue. It's going to consume more of our combat readiness. That's fine. See, look at that. It doesn't require a story point because it had an officer. And then there's another one coming in, but we can, in fact, get home first and repair. And our character leveled up. We're finally max level, level 15. We get best of the best. More deployment points at the start. Not that that's going to be super useful, because we need like two, we need a little bit over 200 anyways in order to deploy everything. But yeah, that's what we're going to want, of course. Best of the best. There we go. I've also got a few story points, so we can start making some elite skills, like this one. And for the Paragon, Field modulation is probably the... Well, we'll go target analysis for this one. Because that's always a good choice. And, it, like, it was already a good choice when it was just extra weapon damage, but now it got even better. I think I'm... See, I'm only getting two elite skills per officer. And ultimately, I think I want helmsmanship elite. I want target analysis for more damage, and I want helmsmanship elite even though Elite Field Modulation is pretty good on Paragons. I'm not convinced it's necessary. Whereas Helmsmanship, like flat 10 extra speed, just gets them around the battlefield so much faster. So I think I'll hold on to that point. You. Do I want to do anything with you? Uh, hmm. Anybody else? That's fine. Uh, maybe I can just get in a... Maybe I can S-mod something. That's, all, that's always an option. Oh, you leveled up. That's good. That's good. We can get that. 
Right, and hopefully, the last... All right, you've got the core four skills, so it kind of doesn't matter what you get. But even if you get something, I, you don't get anything I want, I can always use Mentor to re-roll it, so I've got two chances, even though that does cost a story point. Yeah, I can restore this immediately. And what else? What kind of S mod would be the starting point? Maybe I S mod an autoloader onto one of you. So you get more Reapers, which would be relevant for this battle. And I do want to try out the autoloader. See how good it is in the long term. Yeah, I do have the autoloader, right? I have that unlocked. Yes, I do. Okay. So we'll toss that on. 75% bonus XP. That's always nice. Alright. And with that, so we've got the tiny one. And the tiny one actually got isolated from the larger fleet. Hopefully that tiny one counts as one of the five fleets. Because that, that thing, even though it did kind of sneak past us, by itself it's not accomplishing anything. Another 62%. That's cool. Okay, so lesson learned. You send them like this. We want to make sure that we capture and hold these points really quickly. Send you to the center, send you there, you can escort, and off we go. And we can even see the planet in the background. How tense is that? I mean, it's got a, it's got a big red shield. I feel like it should be in... I feel like that should really keep it safe from any tragic bombardment scenarios. Like, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Would it not? Taken care of. Alright, now we just need to sit here. Because if I sit here, then even if the AI moves off this spot, it won't be an issue, because I'll be here. We do need to make sure the AI doesn't... the enemy AI doesn't get close enough to interrupt. Which they did. But it was short. Okay, we got it. We got it. Paragon deployed. I repeat, Paragon deployed. Excellent. That's a Reaper. Excellent. Oh, you already fired the Reaper, did you? taken care of. I want to get away from these so that I don't overload. Yeah, Paragons are going to chew through them pretty quickly. I do want to land a Reaper on this thing, but uh, I'm not sure I can get through that point defense, so we'll pull back. Now let's take care of you. There's a lot of fighters. Come on, let's take care of this quick. Get out of here. We don't want everybody getting flanked by a bunch of random garbage. That's my job, is to clean up the flanks, really. We do have double Paragon now, so that's probably a good... It's probably good. Okay. So we do have a bunch of crap over here. Looks like they're moving down over towards the Sensor Jammer. I think we'll abandon that, that's fine. We can grab this one. So... I'm kind of facing down the head of their fleet. It's not a good place to be for a flanking ship, but this, this might be a good place. Now, hopefully I can just finish this thing off nice and quick. Hand blasters. Get a little EMP from the Sabos because I need to get the hell out of here. Bye bye. I'm gonna go to my. S I'm gonna go back to my friends because I'm not fighting alone. I have the power. Oh, I guess you guys have the power of friendship too. Maybe even more because there's a lot of officers. Although this doesn't even have an officer despite being a capital ship. That's a level 7 officer. Legendary levels of talent. And he wastes it dying to a random paragon because AI bad. 
Am I right? What a loser. You could be doing so many things with your life, and you choose to do this. Yeah, I don't really feel bad about calling you a loser. Although that just might be personal bias, because it's my colony, but... You know what? I don't care. Oh, not a bad shot from both of you. You want to join my team? We could use guys with good shots. That would be nice. Alright, this is a little fly, a little mosquito. And it's gone. This doesn't have an officer. So, yeah. That's... that's good. I like that. Sh straight up Sabo plus Reaper Overload right away. And there's a Paragon to help. What are you doing? You're killing... well, you're not pointing at it, but you're gonna kill that pretty quick. I need to take some distance and vent, and then I'll switch over to the other guy. Yeah, the AI's really hesitant to use Amblasters. Even when you've got, like, a prime opportunity to just dump them into something. In that case, it did actually use them. Nice. So all we've got left is this crap. And then we're golden. Life is... life could be dream. Life could be dream. And as far as I saw, this is really it. Although, of course, it's not, it's not over until it says it's over. But I think this was really it. This we'll have to see. Not quite. That's too bad. catch up with the Zero Flux boost. There we go. And you're dead. Excellent. And there's just a few supporting ships. Clean them up. I mean, really, they just delivered a bunch of bonus XP for me. So that's nice of them. I can actually afford to take more than I my capacity because the, the place is right here. Looks like the hegemony was defeated. That's cool. I like that. I like it when my enemies are defeated. It's much preferable to the opposite. And it looks like that scavenger... Uh, there was a small fleet. I don't know where it went. The attacking forces have been defeated and scatter. All right. That's what I like to see. Colony crisis concluded. I was about to say handled, but then I realized concluded would, you know, it's alliteration, right? You, they all, have, they all start with C. Yeah, I think that was a good call. All right, so. It looks like they've been totally removed. They're no longer generating any hate. Yeah, the path, the, after defeating their expedition, the path has been removed. I wonder if that means permanent. Uh, cool. Oh, the cells are even disrupted. Interesting. So I don't have to go hunt down a random station. The cells are actually disrupted by that. That's cool. And we're well on our way to size 6. Making tons of cash defeated the enemies. So now we can just go back. Let's go grab this. Might have a there's a small chance that it might have a colony item, but it's worth investigating. The hegemony still being a pain because of course they are. I don't really care about the salvage out of this battle. I'm just going to go do stuff. Yeah, let's take control. No. Let's leave. There we go. Excellent. I might want more supplies, though. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm going to be next to the Core Worlds. Okay. So, there is a slipstream going down that way. Let's use that. Gonna have to go the opposite way here. 
and then go the normal way here. Perfect. Almost overshot it, but I managed to hold S just as we passed by. Yeah, it looks like it's kind of going down into the left, which is a bit unfortunate. And then it stops here. Yeah, you guys should be scared of me. I just defeated your big invasion fleet, because I, th I think those were Pathers. I should have a reputation among the Pathers, really. They should be like, oh my, it's you. Uh, you don't need to pay a tithe. Uh, keep up the good work, guy. They should be like that. They should be scared. They should be scared of me now. Maybe that's the the, the reward. Is that they, they see you and they just stop picking a fight with you because they're like, oh, he defeated like our, our holy armada. There's no way I have a chance against him. That would make sense. Right, so we're back here. Let's see, is there still a bounty for this? No, it does not look like it. Yeah, let me let me just double check bounties. Bounties, no, there's nothing. All right, good to know. Oh, look at that, just about 200,000. Four cruisers and that's it? I mean, the fleet that I just beat was I mean, I've beat multiple fleets recently that were harder than this. So that might be worth doing. Let's go find this. The Outer Reaches of Mokosh. It's only a few letters away from Moloch. Hmm. Do you guys have any... Do, do the Pathers in the system have any comment on how similar this name is to Moloch? Are you perhaps compromising your morals? No, I'm just kidding. See, and the system name has nothing to do with anything. Or does it? Cue the Vsauce music, everyone. Just cue the Vsauce music. This is a deep question. If you associate, say, if you associate yourself with the iconography of the thing that you hate for the for practic for pragmatic reasons, is that not is that compromise real, or is it just a fictitious one? Is it simply a compromise on an intellectual level that has no pragmatic outcomes, or are you allowing your movement to be rotted away at its soul? Who's to say? Let's kill these guys. Make this nice and quick. They've been here for centuries. It's time to put them out of their misery. I think in the tutorial they say it's like illegal to go interfere with these things, but... I mean... That's, no, that's never stopped anyone as far as I can tell. Or maybe that's the explanation for why nobody else does it, but I mean, given the general respect for legality and domain law in the sector, somehow I doubt that. Right, let's take care of it. Wow, you actually got that. Max range, too. Very cool proud of you. You're doing great. Keep at it. One day, you might be, one day the AI might be as good as I am. If you keep up that, that working hard attitude. Look at that. It actually used the AM Blaster, and it was on target. This is a good day. This is a good day. Alright, we've got that taken care of. So that's just the probe. What we're looking for are outer reaches, right? Nope, that's the wrong button. I'm gonna salvage the rest of this. We have volatiles, so we can hit nine. Okay, so that's pointing at the comm relay. That's pointing at the planet. We get two pointing back there, that's that. One pointing at this. So there's one pointing out this way and one out this way. So first I'm going to follow this one. It could be fake. We'll find out when we get there. Or I guess if we don't get there. Nope, that looks real. Or at least it's real to me. And fortunately, no colony items. But it does happen sometimes. 
if you're real lucky. Okay. That's taken care of. It's time to move on with the main quest. Hmm. A bunch of gnats. A bunch of sensor gnats. Little bugs buzzing around, trying to be noticed. What could they be? Who do they work for? Interesting questions. But I'm sure the answers will only lead to more questions. And the questions will lead to more answers. It's the hedonic treadmill of knowledge. You can never completely know everything. So why even bother? I don't know, because it's fun. Is that, is that good enough? I think that's good enough. All right, Academy Station, what have we got? Yes, 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 the main quest. With the gate scans completed and Dowd's assurance that the hegemony will not interfere, we may proceed to the implementation phase. This is Silo's moment, of course. Let me link her in. Provost Baird, Captain Paul Bingus. Explain the Janus device for Captain here. All right, the prototype device. Yep, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Great. Excellent. Love to hear it. But, but the data, it shows that the system, the resonance, it is fundamentally chaotic. There are clearly some some other factors. We're seeing results the model doesn't account for, and at fire higher magnitudes, the results could be... That's enough, Academician. The captain is a highly skilled professional, and he doesn't need to hear all of this to do their job. I'm more of a big picture type leader. Yeah, let's go with that. I don't need to know the details. I know how this goes. All right, Academician Carus will return to work refining the details as more data is gathered. As a great man once said, technological advance is an inherently iterative process. Captain, the first prototype Janus device is being transferred to your fleet. Tested on the gate manifold you have scanned. Record everything with your sensor suite and the modified instruments we have provided. This may be the most important experiment in the history of the Persian sector. Ah, yeah, the manifold, of course. I understand all this. Just don't use it in an inhabited system. Thank you for the reminder, Academician. Obviously, we shall not repeat my predecessor's mistake. Test this somewhere quiet. I await your results, Captain. Yeah, we know where the hell. We, we, we know how this is gonna go. Do you have anything to say? No. Nope. Do you have anything to say? Ah, should I be worried? All sciences. No, I can't do this. Promise told me what to tell you and not tell you. She was very clear about her objections to my attitude about questioning her leadership. And here I am at the Glacier Academy. The hegemony still has a warrant out for my arrest. To say nothing of the League or let help me. The Pathers. She's got me. I wouldn't send you out with this prototype if I thought for sure it was a, 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 a death trap or something. That's all I can say. And, um, good luck? Yeah, you're a bit socially awkward. That's fine. You're a, you're a nerd. That's the whole idea. You're a nerd. We get it. All right. I can read between the lines here. I mean, obviously, because I know what's going to happen anyways. But I can read between the lines here. It's not totally safe. And I'm the guinea pig. I get it. That's I, I understand. Right? The, the provost is just okay with this. Everyone's like, no, don't trust the provost. She might be bad. Yeah? But she also gives me cool tech, so we're going to do this. Or at least, well, she hasn't given it to me yet, but she will. I can see the future. I know how this works. I did some... Uh, I did some of that melange, some of that spice. I know it's coming. A 
are we going to make it across? No. But we're fine. So the gate is... Let's take the shortest path. The gate is right up here, so... We're going to go to this gravity well. We're going to scan this gate. I think we can still scan new gates. We should be able to. Even though we're at the next phase. Wait, did I scan this? That's right, I don't I actually have no idea which ones I scanned. Yeah, not this one. Okay. So let me scan this. Scan the gate. Fly through it first. Prototype. The thing is, even if you get away from this thing, you still get hit. You can try, like, emergency burning away. You still get hit. It doesn't matter. And I believe this disrupts the system in some way. Does it? I think it does. Well, anyways, the next part of the quest, we're going to need to find a certain someone to help us build a proper Yenis device. Take control, proceed, leave. Not that I particularly need that, but I want it. Okay, moving on. Bounty, cool. Not interested. We're going to go do more gate stuff. We're so close to a breakthrough, Captain. We're so close. What's this? Yeah. And let's go around this time. Let's take the longer path. Let's take the high road. I'm a little short on supplies. Might need to pick up a few of those. In a quick s in. And of course, we're at war with the people in this system, so that's going to be annoying. But we're also basically maxed out with Tritachion, so that's cool. I mean, worth it. We might... You know what? I can probably drop the Tritachion condition, uh, commission soon. I've got plenty of cash, and I've maxed out their reputation. So, even if I drop their commission, I'll still be high in... Well, I'll be really high, but I won't be able to buy anything from their military. Which is kind of not an issue, if I have all the stuff that I want from them. Oh, that's another thing I can do. I can take on the the Sentinel fleet. I can take them on and recover one of their ships. Hopefully the Eagle. I can fit the Eagle into my fleet. Although, I do want to use a Mercenary. I do want to try using a Mercenary in the last fleet slot. And I've already got like a base, like a normal Eagle that can take a human. I guess we'll see. It's going to take story points and I don't have a lot of those. I've seen worse. What's plan B? Baird narrows her eyes at this. Plan B is we recalibrate. The device using the data you've gained from the experiment. And then try again. Academician, when will the next iteration of the prototype be completed? I don't... We, we need more time. Academician. And I'm a theoretician, not an engineer. Yep, I need... You do realize that I am holding several hegemony ministries at bay. This rearing to storm and purge Galatia Academy. Again, all I have on my side are the good graces of the hive scum hegemon by Carl Dudd. And that, that, is only held up by the sector shattering promise of what the results of this project could mean. If I don't get results, the lucky ones will live out their days in some oubliette near the core of Quattel. I'm sorry if you're having trouble, but I am accommodating the conditions circumstances have provided. So by all means, Scala, take your time. What is it? And there it is, Elisa Zoll. We need Elisa, we need the engineer. Of course. And now we can talk to you. I, I could have been killed! Yes, you definitely owe me for this. Failed experiment. I should never have gone ahead. <laughs> I know. Okay. She says awkwardly. It's like, yeah, I know you shouldn't have done that. R right. I think we need Gargoyle in on. Uh, of course, he's already... Uh, 
Gargoyle is already listening because Gargoyle is a legend and he, naturally they, they would be hacking and listening into the conversation what else would like that I mean this this is not a trustworthy face look at his eyes I keep calling him him apparently it might be non-binary that would make sense given the way that that is that that's a very that's a very um almost cliche non-binary look I'm very not used to that sort of thing though so I might flip-flop between pronouns we'll have to see I mean so far I've done that let's see Sila girl I, I don't even remember what accent I gave Gargoyle before Yeah, I have no idea what voice I gave Gargoyle before. Probably something goofy, like, The goons won't let me into the lab anymore, so I snuck in when they were changing shifts. Your bright but stylistically sedated friends told me you were in some kind of important meeting, so I thought, how important could it be if I wasn't invited? So I had to ask Alvis what was going on. Can you believe it? You know how he is, all stammering and trying so, so hard not to lie or say anything against the old witch and... Oh, this is about the experiment and the exploding, isn't it? Queen Bee wasn't happy about that, huh? It's probably something like that. Very, uh, a very colorful character, I imagine. No, not especially. Yes, um, I mean, no, she wasn't happy. But what's important now is we find Elisa, Zal, uh, yes, how do you know her? Oh yes, but please, please, I must apologize. I've interrupted your story, go on. I don't want to spoil anything too soon. Um, okay, yes, so I've actually been in contact with Elisa on and off. Maybe uh, the captain here knows something about that. The problem with Elisa is, well, she's being held sort of prisoner by Kanta. Can you elaborate on sort of prisoner? Well, she's allowed some contact with the outside world. Privileges? Uh, obviously, I guess, due to our arrangements, but that's all been through Kanta's organization. And then through whatever pirates owe the Kantas a favor. When Elisa says, drop this instrument package in this orbit, if Kanta's behind her, it gets done. Elisa can sneak some things past Kanta's people. Her work is beyond them by a long shot. But it's risky, and it's getting riskier. Kanta is a bit, um... Her reactor is a bit leaky. Uh, there's probably a, probably a bit more of an upwards inflection there. The reactor is a bit leaky? Something like that. You know, trying to communicate that Kant is crazy, but, you know, in a timid sort of way. Gargoyle. I feel like you know something about that's going on here. Oh, no, 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 no. But yes, a little here and there. I mean, how could I not? Zal has a reputation. She's the Zal. It would be a delight to assist in another Zal scheme. Right. Reputation. If Gargoyle says a reputation and seems delighted about it, we can kind of get an idea of what kind of reputation that means. All right. How do we get Zal out? Well, I can get you in. You know, to have talk. Find an angle. I think that might be how to do it. I may have worked with someone who, oh, twist my arm, yes, it was Kanta's, yes, it was Kanta's some, um, fourth cousin, grand nephew, or something. I'm sure there are a lot of Kanta's, aren't they? Very, very busy, the Kanta's. Point being, I may have acquired a digital token that'll get you an audience without getting shot on sight. From there, well, you have also have a reputation. Tell Kanta you'll do some work for her. You're a hot item in the dark hypernet, what with everything you've been up to lately. Oh, wait, hold on. I've gotten an audience with her before not without getting shot on sight. That's, you're full of it. You're full... Oh, hold on. The qu this dialogue doesn't entirely make sense because I've already done that. I gave her the combat replicator. I didn't get shot on sight then. Why would I get shot on sight now? 
You're full of it. Is hot good? <clears throat> Up to a point. There's hot and there's radioactive. Right now, you're definitely hot, but you'll want to be careful about reaching critical mass. Yes, uh, we certainly don't want that. But this is wonderful. If Gargoyle can get you a way in, then you can somehow get Elisa out? Maybe make a deal? I I I'll do whatever it takes. I don't have a lot of credits, but uh, um, if it would help... Intuition hasn't failed me yet. But... Both Gargoyle and Cruz look confused for a moment. Best of luck. Be sure to calms me if you need anything. I, uh, thank you, Captain. You won't regret helping Elisa. I know it. Alright, that's my, that's my little voice acting for the day. I'm gonna need some water. Alright. So we're gonna go here. And I believe this is where we get the Yanis device. And we use it to skedaddle because things get hairy and real scary first though I need supplies Mosey on up here. What have we got? Well, we've got supplies. You have more in the black market for some reason. Classy move. Uh, you guys can have some raspberry pies. Right. Uh, why? Why is it every time I go to a Tritacan station, I get this option in the number one spot that I don't care about? I want to do. I want number one to just be the AI chorus because that's what it always is. Please. Although that's already been suggested on the forums, so there's not much to do there. Oh, speaking of the forums, I actually got a direct... Someone made an account just to send me a direct message with a question, and if you're watching this, I'm sorry that I didn't get back to you for like 10 days. I didn't see it, to be honest. Most people don't use the direct message function on the forums, and the little the notification for it is... Like, this ain't Twitter. Right? It's, it's not very obvious. But I did see it. I did reply, so... Well, I hope I answered your question. Okay. Uh, that should be fine. All right, we've got supplies. Now we move on. It's time to do a little business with the Kantas. Uh, do I need to be going dark? Not really. Any pirate fleets around should be scared of me. Although, it would be nice to avoid bumping into every asteroid. Alright, this is a little... Prepare a raid. Extreme. Yeah, we don't even have close to enough. Yeah. We'll just do it the normal way. Take a shuttle down. Do you like your fry red or green? What? I'm confused. Oh. So I, he's like, gonna buy me lunch? Or do you like waiting? Cut the shake down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some random grunt. Some the digital token. I mean, I visited before, I didn't have to go through all this. It's a bit, you know, we've added new mechanics since then. Like, this was built This was built first, and then new mechanics have been added later, where you can talk to Kanta, and now they're kind of incongruent with each other. Hopefully they get sorted out. Oh, family, huh? Didn't recognize your face, Cap. You don't got the family look. <laughs> the Kanta's are everywhere, eh? Lud tells, you should have said something before I go off broadside in you. You know the drill. The warlord doesn't like comms, 
So I'm gonna have to make you an appointment with the court. Get your boots on station, and I'll have someone meet you. Yeah, that's the voice I'm going with for you, because I'm never gonna see you again. Right, and then there's this clown. <laughs> Behold, the court of Warlord Kanter, queen by blood conquest, is in session. <laughs> Let's go with that. You bear token of Kanter's kin, Nashyan, who is of the outer family, but Nashyan never gave you this token. I checked. Not super happy with that. Or was that Kanta talking? I don't think it was. I think it was Sidonia. Anyways, I'm mostly good. I should just skip through this dialogue. We know the family is safe, so we will not take your blood. Not this day. And that's very boring for a warlord, but I don't really know what voice to give her. Uh huh, uh huh. I, I'm no thief. I come openly having taken a prize from your kin. Based. Services. In exchange for leases, all. Right. Yep, my payment will be Zal. Mm -hmm. It's a deal. Continue. Yep. Naturally. Okay. So now we leave, and now we talk to another legend of the sector. One Cotton Livewell. He's he, he he lives well, and he likes cotton. I presume. I mean, maybe you shouldn't assume such things about people just based off their name. But I'm going to do that anyways because he is a he is a pather. I, he probably likes work in the fields. He's probably all about that life. Oh wait, no, he's too busy piloting starships and killing people. That's right. Never mind. Silly me. Alright, of course, we can also do a raid. Hey, hold on. This looks pretty similar in difficulty. If I'm gonna do the raid... If you're gonna do a raid anyways, then... You would want to do the raid over at Contest Den instead, right? So, this raid should be easier than the other one. That would make sense. All right. Oh, hey, an officer for hire. Ooh, that's combat endurance. I don't care that you're reckless. We can fix that. We can work with that. Actually, don't have a second Medusa right now. I'm going to have to fix that. Dockside bar. Yep. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. So we're going to leave and go back. Dockside bar. I guess that was what, just one of those random events that happens now. Oh, look, they have unique bar art. That's cool. I don't think, I think this is relatively new. And I haven't seen it before. All right, ask around about Brother Cotton. Continue. Invoking this name kills conversations like an EMP. I believe in our current day we call that being stunlocked. Oh, maybe that's not quite right. I, I, you were just shutting down conversation. It's, it's not quite the same thing, but I mean, they could both happen at the same time. Watch yourself speak in that name. I know folk who crossed him, and they ended up dead. He's got eyes and ears everywhere, clever enough to bend the tech bands to his advantage, you know? Most true believers, cowards, pulling a con or get their brains adrift. Not him, though, no. He's made the path his own, and knows how to use it. Well, this'll be you, then. I'm here to talk. Cotton will know me. And, uh, and here I thought Lud taught a religion of peace. Don't you know your own doctrine? Or do I have to lecture you on your own beliefs? I'm just going to nod to my guards. I'm in no offense. I just wish to see your boss. I'll wait here. Around for these large gentlemen over here. Go to the back room. And there he is. 
Captain Paul Bingus. I'm from New York, huh? That doesn't seem right. But it's funny, so we're gonna go with it. I am Brother Livewell Cotton, and I'm pleased to greet you with the blessings of Lud's peace and all that, naturally. A pleasure. Call me Livewell if you like, and I'll thank you for the sentiment. Won't you join me for tea? I offer to you, my guest, with the safety and hospitality that I've been blessed to provide. Come along in your own time. I'm no scorpion, I do assure you. <coughs> now, I do know why you are here. It's no great coup of the secret whisperers and listeners, why the warlord Jorian Kanter has been sent in a most diverse company of ne'er-do-wells to bring myself into an untimely end. Be it convenient. Claim back her ungodly creation. <coughs> Though, I must offer my apologies. Most assuredly, accept yourself from the company of those ne'er-do-wells. Uh, yeah, I don't think I actually ever encountered those. I probably dodged them at some point. Or did I? Maybe I did fight them. Right, let's, uh, number two. Tell true. If I met you with hammer and fiery sword, would you prevail? Might be you do. Then what would my brothers and sisters have died for? The clone? It serves our holy war that Kanta not forget that the path is all around her. Ephemeral and indomitable. Killing is not victory. <laughs> not always. I suppose you have better things for them to die for. Yes. Yes. I do. I did not don the blood-stained mantle of leadership lightly. It was to be my path, and I shall walk without averting my eyes from the truth of my deeds. Lud's revelation is pain. Lud chose the path not because it was easy, or kind, or without suffering. He chose it because it was good. Hegemony tacticians and the thinking machines alike make the same mistake. They think that all who walk the path can be defeated if we are measured, tracked, and numbered. Our beautiful holy war is not a mathematical calculation, but the soul of humanity. What we fight for cannot be held in data, in data banks and log books. I am certain that now is not our time to do battle. We walk a path, you and I, and here it crosses, but does not end. I know not, but that I must have faith. It's good now. You should have some. You know the histories of the great and terrible warlord... What the... What is this name? Onesimos? It looks like one Simos, but it's probably more like Onesimos. Of the great and terrible warlord Onesimos Loki, yes? Once a grand officer of the domain, the Knights of Lud stood then with the hegemony, standing with pride against wrath. Was that the path? This abomination is a sad copy of Onesimos Loki, concocted by the so-called Dr. Sidonia. He is a sick man, and to please Kanta for reasons I do not understand, he made a sick joke of the miracle of life. I had thought its death would be a demonstration. Hold on. <clears throat> yeah, I'm definitely needing water for this one. Just as a healer excises a cancer. But as I held a gun to its head, my hand was stayed. I felt this was not the path. Did I pity the thing? It is rare indeed that I do not find moral clarity in the execution of a heretic or abomination. I gave it into the care of some siblings of the faith. They taught it prayer from the book. It appears to think and to feel. I wonder if this is a lesson in humility. Imagine to look upon the Creator's work and then this bloodless thing. 
Yes, yes, Sidonia, some mercy. You have met him. I know, is he not strange? I cannot imagine a more wretched creature. Accepting his creation, the Loki thing. Sidonia is a liar to the end of space, and even the sacred becomes sin when it has left his hands. If you find occasion to bring his life to an end, I do believe it would be a good and righteous deed. Agreed. If the Loki thing started less than human, Kanta has lowered herself to that sorry state by her debauched pursuit of wrath and immortality. She's a malfunction of the machinery of the hegemony, an obsolete hazard to be cleared away, like the stealth mines she's wrapped around her fortress. I'm kind of messing up the accent now. I need to take a, take a moment to breathe. <laughs> hmm, a little congested. All right. Why is this clone so important to her? What now sits on Kanta's throne of blood and gold is abject to the teachings of blessed blood. Though a warrior cannot be ignorant of his enemies, I must confess that I am not inclined to gaze too deeply into that monstrous abyss. Shall I debate an AI core? Shall I ponder its heart? No, because it has no heart, no soul. It is a thing. Kanta wants her abomination. This is all I need to know. And you will be the one to give the abomination back to her. You're just giving me Loki? Yes. It, is, it has no path here. Its presence is raising questions which ought not be asked. So you will take it from my people and go. By both of us, I tell you true. I have prayed long on this matter. Once, long ago, I was in a prison cell. I heard music like, like holy Numa, from afar, a choir of angels. My heart leapt to be touched so. Eagerly I listened closer, and in not a blink, it was gone. For just a moment I was touched by grace. Do you understand? My life turned at that point. I found the path. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about a while ago. He heard the music, he heard the singing, and suddenly, suddenly joined the path. Just like how Lud was guided by a choir of angels that only he could hear. And we know the singing is, asso comes from the, is associated with the ziggurat. We know this. So what we have here is whatever it is that's controlling the ziggurat is somehow influencing human beings into this very anti-AI, anti-tech path. This is obvious from thanks to Cotton and Lud himself. But to what end? It seems like they're using humans as pawns to cripple AI and AI development. And AI also hate phase space, which is uh, obviously the ziggurat is connected to phase space. So exactly where this is going, it's not clear, but it's clear that there is a connection here. And it's woven in a way where it's, it doesn't just outright tell you, but if you're paying attention to the story, it's pretty obvious. The music did not return. So that was my one moment, I thought. It had confirmed my righteous calling, and that was enough. For years, I heard nothing. I expected nothing. Then one day, not too long ago, it did visit upon me again. That was the day <clears throat> I was told you were to come here. What am I to make of that? I cannot say whether it is a choir of angels or a host of demons. I fear not pain, death, or judgment, but I do fear to stray from the path. My people have already brought the abomination to your shuttle. Go there now, with Lud's peace. Cool. Yeah, the conversation with him is not going to be very interesting, but we can ask him the questions. You can read them if you want. And we're going to leave. Simple as. Yeah, I think my exit was all over the place with that one. <laughs> I feel like it, it changed a few times. There's a, few, there's a couple points where I'm like, hmm, that wasn't quite right. But so be it. It's the price I pay for doing something that I'm not exactly an expert in. And you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. It was fun. All right, time to finish this off. And of course, Kanta's not going to make it so easy for us, but 
our friends on the other side are always one step ahead. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now send these all. Should I insult? I should insult. Captain, detected stealth mines, arming, sparse, de sparse development of fleet, damage outlook, checking, moderate. They want to show that they can hit us. If we give you a gift, it will only be at our pleasure. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, you must learn. Kanta has for you another task. Complete it without complaint, then perhaps you may win back her favor. After, after such an outrageous... Yeah, and Zal is like, nah. I'm already hacking. I'm in the mainframe. I'm in. A classic... Another good, uh, another good case of comedy. Toss him out with a helmet, or just toss him out. Do you want him to be returned? Or do you want him to die? I think we're gonna go the brutal option today. I'm fe I'm in a brutal mood, you know? I'm in a, I'm a mean guy. Reduced by 90, yep. Sensible. Alright. Yeah, I'm not even gonna question you, because I know it's gonna work. Let's go. Oh, there's a fleet coming, screaming down. There's a lot of fleets. You guys weren't, didn't exist like two seconds ago, but that's fine. I know how this works. Oh wow, they've actually got more than just pirate ships. These are like independent mercenaries by the looks of it. You guys are tiny. What are you even doing? What? You're really gonna you're gonna take my time up like this, are you? You're gonna do this, really? You're gonna lose to the omens. What are you thinking? I guess it does kind of interrupt my sustained burn, so the next fleet might catch me. But to what end? I mean, battles happen so fast relative to travel through real space that. I mean, it, you silly fools. You little grooblins. You know, maybe hammers are a better choice. They do have a... They do have less total damage than a single Reaper, I believe. Or is it the same total damage? No, I think it's less, but they're faster. And the two of them combined have more hit points. So maybe I should be doing autoloader hammers, but... You know, the damage potential of Reapers is just hard to pass up. Yeah, and of course this one catches me. I don't want to spend any more story points than I have to. Oh, and it spawns a battle space. You are wasting my time. Why? All right, let's 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 just get everyone over here, actually. Let's go all over to the sensor jammer. Let's just do all over the sensor jammer because we're going to capture this point. They're going to come over here. This should be the quickest way of doing it. And let's not forget autopilot instead of drifting forward across the map. Let's not forget that. What's our ECM looking at? 5% for us? 10% for us? It's a little bugged where if the enemy doesn't have any ECM, it doesn't show where... No, it, yeah, now that they have some ECM, it can actually show us what their side looks like. But I think it's... No, it's. it makes sense if they have 0% ECM that it doesn't show theirs. But sometimes if, if you have like 30 and they have like 3 then the, their effect is low enough that it just doesn't show it, which can be a little annoying. Although I've brought that up and it looks like they're fixing that. They're pretty good with that. Alex is pretty good with that. Alright, come on. Strike us if you dare. In fact, let's drop this. Unleash the beast. The beast being a metaphor in this case, just in case it wasn't clear. There's no actual space beast. I know, I know, it's a very exciting prospect, a space beast, but no, there isn't one. Yet. All right. All right. Close the distance, Helmsman. I want to hit him with my sword. Let's try and get right around behind you. 
Oh, that is a lot. That is uh, a lot. Alright, let's get you in. Because we can definitely mitigate some of this damage. Yeah, let's just get in the way. Just like that. Alright, so we are currently... Engines are offline. That's less than ideal. But once again, we can save ourselves by getting in there ourselves. Alright, let's, let's actually vent. That would be a good idea. Now, of course, enemy fury is going to take a while to get through these dang shields. And, of course, I built off all this soft flux. I don't want him to just vent all that, so I'm going to close in with you. It's an overload. Perfect. Let's force him to move closer. That's what I like to see. Because even if you miss with the Reaper, if you fire it behind them, in order to dodge it, they have to move closer, which keeps them in range of the other ship. I'm just doing a little zoning. Oh, that was a good face nice shot. That makes me very happy. Alright, let's catch this. Oh, you actually stopped it. Well, too bad you can't stop this. Yeah, this was not wise on part of these mercenaries. I don't know how much Kant is promising you guys, but... I mean... I guess part, probably part of why they took this job is just the reputation, right? Because apparently... I mean, I just saw at the last second my other fury was flamed out and flanked towards the bottom of the map. That was amusing. But I assume... Oh, they have an ox. Interesting. And a revenant. Give me those. But I assume part of the reason they, they would even agree to this is just the reputation. Because apparently... We're hot. We're not radioactive, but we're hot on the deep hypernet or whatever. And if you're the guy who gets to take us out, that would be good for your reputation, I assume. Mm hmm. Microsat, yeah. Scan the gate, fly through the gate. Oh, right, we've got to do that. Activate the device. Access executive control. We jump over to Glacia. And that's that. Zoom. And the people following us are all like, wow, that just happened. Crazy. I can't be I can scarcely believe my eyes. Are the sensors deceiving me? What do you want? Is it my transponder? Yeah, now you're scared. You, now you realize, oh, I'm hostile and stronger than you. Go away. Captain Paul Bingus, we observed your fleet come through the gate. It was magnificent. History has leapt forward for the first time in 200 cycles. Sila, she should hear this so she knows why I had to do all that. I'll link her in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Elisa Zal sits across from you, smiling to herself. Is it Cruz? Zal rolls her eyes at you and fails to suppress a smile. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. You're not subtle. Yep. Come in, come in. Make yourself comfortable. I wanted to show you this announcement before... I wanted to show you this before the announcement went public with approval from the High Hegemon. Yep us coming through the gate. And this little show is only the first step, Captain. A link between two gates is momentous, but it means that so much more is possible. If we can open one gate, then we can scale the technology to open more. It will make nearly unimaginable energy and the resources of a sector-spanning empire. Though factions of the sector are weak, the bones of the domain are scattered all around us. Academician Simisola has located a derelict coronal tap, which could provide the energy required to, theoretically mined, open permanent links in the gate network. And if what Caruso's theories imply are true, 
Where is Sela? She was to report here after securing the schematics. Yup, and they make their grand escape. Sneak a glass of victory spirit while you can. Yep, and of course, Gargoyle was sneakily helping along, but with enough plausible deniability that Baird can't do anything about it. And then Baird is very upset. Have you a knife for me too, Captain? You reap what you sow. Didn't Lud say that? Did he? I mean, we could go through all of these options. She's very upset right now. It's probably best to just say, well, looks like my work. Yes. I'm going to leave. I'm happy with the results. Not much for me to say at this point. Yeah, of course she's not. You got plausible deniability and all that. Oh! I just, you know, with everything going on, at the end there, security is shouting, uh, yes, you getting paid. Let's see. Finance, contracts, bingus. The, yes, there you are. And there you go. Uh, yes. I, I just wanted to say thank you for, um, it's been an honor to be part of, of making history, I guess. Couldn't have done it without you, buddy. Okay. So, that's taken care of. Very cool. Very epic. We love to see it. Uh, what's left? I actually don't know how long it's been. I think that's actually, well, I mean, we're at Glacier. This is a classic place to stop. I think that's enough. Um, so, outro. See, see that I'm, I'm doing an outro right now, but I don't know what to do. Currently, I'm just saying, yeah, that's about it. See ya.